This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2615, on all the sentimental stuff and clutter, by Courtney Carver of bemorethless.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Friday, if you're listening in real time, and welcome to the podcast where I read to you covering personal growth and self-help topics like mindfulness, minimalism, self-care, and more. I'm gonna get right to our next article as we optimize your life. On All the Sentimental Stuff and Clutter by Courtney Carver of BeMoreWithLess.com. Decluttering comes in waves and stages and layers. Before moving last year, I entered the deepest depths of those waves and stages and layers. I'm talking about the almost everything must go stage. The dishes and clothes were easy, but the stuff that was seemingly attached to my heart was tough. I've let go of many sentimental things in my decluttering journey, but there were a few boxes I held on to until our big downsize. Some things were hard to part with, things like the little plastic bracelet I wore my first few hours on earth, the red sparkly dance outfit I wore when I was two, my junior high report cards, a newspaper from the day that New York City and the world was forever changed, yearbooks, ticket stubs, Polaroids from Amazing Evenings on River Street in Savannah. I'm so glad Facebook wasn't around then. Champagne corks, the little plastic bracelet my daughter wore during her first few hours. Books I read to my daughter so many times that she started catching me when I skipped a page. Love letters, breakup letters, our wedding day menu, and rocks shaped like hearts that I found hiking with the love of my life. Some of these things made me smile, some made me cry, but Each of them brought me out of my life and into my past. As I started going through the sentimental, the ticket stubs, the letters, my mind wasn't here anymore, but back there. And in an effort to hold on tight, I thought, it's not hurting anything or anyone to keep this stuff. And then I remembered that I want my standard to be more in line with how is this helping instead of how is this not hurting. Instead of lingering in the past, I wanna be right here in my big, beautiful life to laugh with my daughter, plan dates with my husband, be immersed in creative projects, hike with my dog, work with awesome people, and send new love letters. I don't want my legacy to be storage containers of stuff. In 100 years, no one will care about a letter of recommendation I received from an art professor that meant so much to me. No one will care how excited I was to get a ticket to a sold out concert at the last minute. The stuff won't matter, but the stories will. I have my stories and I'll tell them to people who care and they will tell them to people who care. When I go, I don't wanna be remembered by the stuff I left behind, but how I loved while I was here. Now that I've identified why I want to let it all go, the paper and plastic stuff that made up my memories doesn't have a hold on me or my heart. Your sentimental clutter questions. Number one, what do I do with old birthday, Valentine's, and other greeting cards? You might choose to save a few or jot down a few of your favorite words before you let them go. If you wanna recycle the cards, cut them in half, toss the personal, and send a card of your own written on the back of the cover. Number two, what about yearbooks full of personal notes? When I looked at my old high school yearbooks, I couldn't remember who wrote what. The messages that were very personal in 1987 couldn't compare to the little notes that I exchanged today with my family or a good Skype conversation with my sister. Assess the meaning of those messages in your life today. If they aren't relevant, release them. Let go to let in. Number three, how do you let go of stuff that has been handmade lovingly for you, but it is not your taste? This is a tough question, and the answer is more for the gift givers and creators. If you do make things or have a specific craft or art specialty, ask your friends and family if they would like you to make them something, or if you can make something for a local organization in their name. For instance, if you're a quilter, you can make a quilt for a homeless shelter in the name of a friend. When you give a gift, include permission to pass it on without hurt feelings. As the recipient of arts and crafts, I'm an artist, so I don't take this lightly, ask the artist if you can donate the item to a place that could really benefit, like a fundraising auction, library, retirement home, or appropriate venue or event. 
Number four, what about things that can't be donated, such as extra monogrammed wedding glasses? Even monogrammed items are useful to people who don't have the item to begin with. If you aren't using them, give them away. Number five, how can I best help others to let go of sentimental items? Share your story, share this post, be loving and patient. Number six, what's the most effective way to store it if you keep it? There's always a chance that what you store will be lost, broken, or forgotten. Instead, take a picture. Take on the shoot your stuff mini mission or read Marcus Allman's Simplicity in Action story for inspiration. Number seven, what about wedding day stuff? Great photographs are enough for me to remember my wedding day and the people who celebrated the event. I gave my wedding dress away last year, but clipped a tiny piece of material from my dress and my mother's wedding dress. They're pinned together, and if someday my daughter wants to pin them into her wedding dress, she can. And number eight, how about things from our children's childhoods? Well, if your children are grown, give them their stuff and trust them to decide what to do with it. Give them permission to keep it or get rid of it so they don't hold on to it for you. If your children are younger, lovingly display their artwork and report cards and instead of saving all of it, save a few pieces or photograph them and make a digital memory book for your child. I have a small box of my daughter's things for her and if she decides that they aren't important, I'll support that. You don't have to let it all go at once. Take it slowly, honor your memories, and identify your whys. Moving forward, instead of capturing moments and boxing them up, embrace them. Be fully engaged and moved right now instead of when you're sorting through the past in a garage or attic. Let your legacy be how you love, how you treat people, and the light you bring to this world instead of the stuff you left behind. You just listened to the post titled On All the Sentimental Stuff and Clutter by Courtney Carver of BeMoreLess.com. Thank you to Courtney. We're all different and by no means should you feel like you have to do any of these. If you love your old greeting cards, yearbooks, handmade things, and wedding day stuff, then keep it. And I don't think Courtney would judge you for that, nor should she or I. I still have my yearbooks dating back from elementary school, and I really don't know what their fate is yet. I do know my parents spent a lot of money on them at the time, so there would be guilt in getting rid of them, but that's not the only reason I still have them. It's a personal decision, and the main takeaway is less about the what and more about the why. I think the reason Courtney encourages this is because this isn't usually talked about, yet should be, and should be normalized. If someone doesn't find value in these things and wants to donate or even trash them, we shouldn't judge them for it just like we wouldn't want to be judged for keeping these types of items. So for me, the main takeaway is really to each their own. As long as we're openly thinking about these things, we're learning and figuring out what would work best in our own lives, and then we can make a well-informed decision the best one for our own unique situation. And with that, hope you have a great Friday. If you're listening in real time, thank you for listening. And I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.